C.S. Lewis once said, you will never get a cup of tea large enough or a book long enough to suit me. And I think book nerds everywhere can resonate with that quote. So with that, here is my 2019 reveal for the Back to the Classics book challenge. Enjoy! Welcome back to my channel. I'm Shalise and you're watching Southwestern Living. And this video is all about, all about my 2019 Back to the Classics challenge. So in tomorrow's video, if things go smooth and well, I will be sharing with you the update for my Back to the Classics Challenge of 2018. It was my effort to really just go back to the classic books and read some of the ones that I haven't been getting and challenge myself to read more classic books. It went really well. Like I said, that uh, video update is going to be out tomorrow. I know I'm talking to the side, but I have to go get a kid. So you will see this that video tomorrow. So I will also leave link down below the blog post that I found this on. I gave it credit to the, the modern Mrs. Darcy, and I was in error with that. It was not the modern Mrs. Darcy. She had a different challenge. So I have this huge stack of books here, and it was really just how I could get it off my shelf and onto the table without falling, so I'm going to share with you what I have chosen. My main, my main purpose or anything in this challenge was to not purchase anything. I had to use what was already on my shelves. And I think I did that last year but I cannot be 100% sure. It's always easy for me to pick up classics. I mean, they're classic, therefore they must be good, and I'll put on my shelf to read, but that doesn't mean I'll actually get it read. So again, I have the criteria that um, the blogger, I don't know her name, but I just, uh, yeah, I don't know her name, but the criteria the blogger put out and then what I chose based on my TBR Classics bookshelf, what I chose to read. So the first one is 19th Century Classic, and for that I picked up Tales of the Alhambra. He is more known for his um, Legend of Sleepy Hollow and Rip Van Winkle, I believe, but um, he has done other works, and I think he did one even on like the biography of New York. <laughs> But this one is The Tales of the Alhambra. So that's what I'm going to do. And I don't know anything about this. The reason I picked this up is actually the accent that I introduced it with. It's from a movie and I cannot remember which movie it is. But I just remembered The Tales of the Alhambra. So um, when I saw it, I was like, that's a real thing. And I have to read it. I'm sure it's like a Jane Austen or a Dickens quote. I'm just really disappointed that I can't remember where it's from. Alright, so number two, because I spent a long time discussing that one. Number two is a 20th century classic. And that one I am going to get the yearling um, hopefully accomplished. Uh, this one has definitely been one that I wanted to do for a long time. This is the 50th anniversary edition. Um, but this is one that I've wanted to do a long time because of how many people on the Read Aloud Revival podcast said that this changed their life as a mother or father. Like, it was this book. So I've had it forever to read, and I need to get doing it. So, and again, I know nothing about it. So, yeah, it'll be interesting. All right, number three is a classic by a female author and again on my shelf um, this was one of the one to read this is Rebecca and I think Re I want to say like she's a ghost I remember seeing the black and white movie years ago but I I get it mixed up with the woman in white and I Uh, yeah, it is. It is about a ghost. Okay, well, that's good that I'm 
somewhat listed in my memory. Um, so that's pretty much all I know. I don't think it's horror, but I do think it goes into like intense and mystery. So that's another one that I would like to get done this year. Um, one of the things that I do love about the Back to the Classics Challenge is that there are 12 books or 12 challenges to meet and that leaves you about one book per month. Some of them are pretty small and one is a very long classic which I'll get to in a minute but sometimes you can read more than one book in a month and sometimes it'll take a couple of months to get through a book. So it it'll work it worked out okay for me this year and you'll have to see the video tomorrow to get more from that. So anyway, that's um book 3, book 4 is a classic in translation and I'm going to be opening my 2019 year with this book because of another challenge I have going for myself in January and that's another video coming out this week. So a classic in translation I have the Confessions of St. Augustine and I have been wanting to do this but I was like I don't know where to make this fit and um, I, I was flipping through it trying to figure out something else and then it says the translation of Edward and I was like okay that's it this is going to be my classic in translation this is one that I've been wanting to read for years. I love everything I've seen of St. Saint Augustine and so um, this will be what I'm opening the year out and of course it's it's kind of narrow it's kind of small we'll see so and it's a beautiful beautiful copy I picked this one up I think at a thrift store for a couple of dollars so that is pretty awesome so and then number five is a classic comedy I chose Pride and Prejudice Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice and we've got um, some plans coming up with Jane Austen and the details are going to be coming soon so stay tuned for that. I can't wait to share more with you. So for a classic comedy I have Jane Austen. Okay then for a classic tragedy this one was probably a little bit of a stretch I have to admit but <laughs> It's on my TBR, and that is The Mystery of Edwin Drood. This is the last book that Dickens, Charles Dickens wrote, and it wasn't finished, so I consider that a tragedy. And this, um, this has left a lot of kind of speculation. It's the tragic secrets of the human heart, so I, I just everything, I was like, you know what, this is going to work, and I've been wanting to read this ever since I was able to do um, kind of play a Dorothy Parker role in a, um, um, uh, what is it called, live mystery, intera interactive mystery, and I was Dorothy Parker's ghost, and we got to meet Dickens, and this was like his last novel, and it was all involved, and as we were learning more about it, I was like, okay, this is one that I want to read, so I'm going to use this one for a classic tragedy. Number seven, a very long classic. Again, on my shelf that I've been wanting to read forever. I mean, just look at the thickness. It's not Moby Dick. It's not Les Miserables. It's the Brothers Karamazov. Dostoevsky's Brothers Karamazov. And um, from what I remember, like, again, I think I learned mostly the most about this book from a Read Aloud Family podcast. Um, but it's about four brothers and the murder of their father, I, I think. Interesting. The story centers on the murder of the author. So it's, it's, I guess it's going to be like his own murder and his sons or something like that. I just remember four sons, one's illegitimate. Uh, the father's murdered and it's kind of like this the realities of the human soul type of thing anyway um I mean whew, how many pages is this this particular copy which is a Barnes and Noble classic and I'm sure this has like oh gosh I just got <laughs> I just got a uh, what do they call it oh and it opens up a John 12 24 that's cool okay so 
730 pages. Holy moly. That's going to be a, a read. This one I will probably kind of start and, especially since it opens up with the Bible verse, I might be able to wing this next challenge in here. I'm probably just going to try to aim for like X number of pages a day. And I'm going to need a notebook to take notes to remember what's going on. So that's my very long classic. Have you read Brothers Karamazov? Leave it in the comment section down below. Am I going to like it? All right, a classic novella. And this one I looked up online and it is considered a novella. And it is, again, Jane Austen, Northanger Abbey, which is kind of like her satire on the whole gothic novels of the day and age. So this is, I think, her shortest one. And it was considered a novella. So that's, I mean, um, like I said, it's her satire on... Um, hello work brain her satire on gothic novels and it kind of goes around this girl Kathleen Moore I think her last name is I remember Kathleen as the main character um, basically she is this young girl these aunt and uncle or her godparents one of those um, end up taking her to London where she's under like two different families influence one is kind of more dark and mysterious and the other one is just more they like to create drama and um, of course she's like pulled into the dark and mysterious good character but there is some secret stuff going on and the other family who's all bright and shiny like a like a diamond and um they're not as great a character as she should be around and it's it just kind of goes more into more of the dark and mysterious like this dad or, or um, the, the dark and mysterious family, there's um, a brother and a sister and like this mysterious dad and she's trying to figure out if he murdered his wife or not because she literally sees um, ghosts behind every door or darkness in every evil corner or whatever the, or evil in every dark corner, you know, that type of thing. It, I like the, like it's my least favorite Jane Austen to be honest, what I do enjoy is the male character that Jane Austen portrayed and basically saying, look, you create romanticism because you want a fluffy life when reality is just, it is what it is and sometimes it looks dull and plain and that's life. I mean, I just, I really appreciate um, that kind of character in um, Jane Austen. Like she, she I, I just really like Jane Austen. She, she would have been a good bosom friend. Okay, a classic from the Americas. And I know um, every, if you don't know too much about me, every October I have been going through the Anne of Green Gables series. And it's just, I actually have never read through the whole series. I had a sister that did that and I knew kind of what was going to happen. So I never did. And now I'm an adult and really just inhaling, um, Anne, but I only allow myself every October to read one and it's just symbolic and it works well it works for me <laughs> and so this year I'm on year four and I will do when Anne of the Windy Poplars and since it takes place in Canada it's the Americas so that's how I'm gonna make that one work number 10 is a classic from Africa Asia or Oceania and I looked this on the map and I can make it work for Asia and I have Rudyard Kipling's Kim, which I will actually be doing with my daughter more towards the end of this year. This is her last um, book that she needs to read um, in our Ambleside-ish sort of. It, it's the last book that she's going to be reading for the school year. So I'm going to be doing this together with her and I'm including it in this Back to the Classics challenge. Okay, I have two more to share with you. A classic from a place you live. Now it could be your town, which I don't have a classic about my particular town. Uh, it could be like your county, your state, I, I, something to that point. Um, the Again, the details are going to be in the description down below, but I actually have a classic from my county. And that is John Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. Again, this is one that I've been wanting to read. I think this is also a band book, so I'm going to include it in my band book week um, reads. 
if I can make it happen. Ha 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 ha. Um, so I don't know too much about it. I think it's about a family that either during the Depression or during the Dust Bowl migrates to California, which a lot of them did, and basically them trying to create um, a life for them in the Mojave Desert, which I'm like, you're all farmers. <laughs> Do you know what the hobby does it's like? So it'll be really interesting to read kind of this perspective on my local area. And then the last one, number 12, is a classic play. I don't like to read plays. I like to see plays. It's kind of like reading Shakespeare. I really would prefer to see Shakespeare, not read Shakespeare. And the only other play that um, in my mind that I've Red was in my English college class a few years ago. Um, I did Death of a Salesman, and that was that was just pathetic. I did not like it. Um, so then I <laughs> then I actually kind of went in my head and started thinking of all of the um, plays or like movies we see that are based on plays. So there was like Man for All Seasons. There were um, Shakespeare there was I mean I was literally just trying to think and I I was running um kind of blank and so I was looking at my husband's shelves I Princess Bride I think is a play and but again we had to shop our shelves that's where a lot of that was where the real difficulty came so in the end I did Cyrano de Bergerac um this is probably like my husband's number one favorite movie of all times yeah, there's some good lines in here, but it's not me, but I will do it, and I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping that a play just ends up on my lap that I would really enjoy. That's a classic, and I can't think of anything at this, at this moment. I was like, okay, Little Woman, I mean, that's been a play, but it's not a classic play. Like, I'm really stretching, I know, with that, but... I kind of wanted to, but I, again, it's all about kind of challenging myself and I'm going to do Santa de Bergerac. All right, that's going to be it for my Read the Classics Challenge for 2019. You can check out, uh, Ben, if you're careful, then don't knock over my thing, please. You can check out, um, there's going to be a blog post, blog post, it's okay, I got it. There's going to be a There's going to be a blog post linked down below because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of these into a blog post with a little bit more information that I can get for them. Down below is also going to be my Goodreads account linked for you um, and also in that blog post will be some of the tips that I got for getting through some of the hard classical books that I read this year and um, maybe some that will help you. I hope that that's that's my goal that's my goal to encourage you and again in that blog post all of these are going to be linked above so you can check them out you can get more information I will have a beautiful set of you know my Jane Austen's and I'll have that linked in there so that you can just um, get that because I know sometimes it's really hard especially nowadays with before copyrights to find a really good quality copy of a book so that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and leave me a thumbs up if you really enjoyed that. Leave a comment down below if you plan on doing this. And if you make a video or a blog post, please share it down below so I can add it to the description box so that all of us can um, just kind of watch and see where we go with this year. And until next time, have another cup of coffee and read another chapter. Bye.